Oh yeah, App Center is back. For .NET MAUI, you can now use analytics, crashlytics, and distribution for your .NET MAUI app. Let's go check it out. Now, before I dive into the technical part, let me give you the backstory for App Center, just so we're all on the same page because not everyone might be familiar with it. Um, App Center has been a product by Microsoft for a good number of years now, and it's basically your one-stop control center for everything that has to do with mobile apps, and not just built with Microsoft technology, also with Objective-C and Java, so the Android and, and iOS parts, um, even React maybe, and, and some other things. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do here. Um, what you can do is like build your app so that's like whatever you can do also with Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions. Um, you can implement analytics. So follow your user through the mobile app that you've built, um, and collect some analytics, things they've clicked, other things that you might want to collect. Um, crashlytics. So whenever the app crashes, you will get the stack trace and some information that might be useful for you as a developer to see what happens. And you can see how often a certain crash happens and that kind of stuff. You can use it for distribution. So you can send your apps from there to the app store. You can first build it, then distribute it from there to the app stores or distribute it directly through App Center. That's a possibility as well. Um, there's also automated UI testing. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but that's basically all the things that you can do from App App Center. Now, like I said, it has been around for a good number of years, but um, you know, the development at some point really slowed down and there weren't really new features being added. It was still maintained, you can still use it, um, but there weren't really exciting features coming. And also with .NET MAUI being released, a lot, a lot, a lot of people were asking like, okay, is .NET MAUI going to be supported now? Um, so yes, because they've now released a pre-release package that also supports .NET MAUI, which is the good news, and we're going to see that in a little bit, but also no. <laughs> um, so for building, for instance, like building your application through App Center, that's not supporting .NET MAUI right now. Um, and I, at this point, it's probably important to say I don't have any pre-existing knowledge about this, although I work at Microsoft. Um, but my bet would be if you want to use Build, go to Azure DevOps, go to GitHub Actions, because we already have those two services um, that can build your application. So it would be kind of weird to also have that still in App Center. Who knows what might happen, um, but it hasn't happened until now. So maybe you want to look at other solutions for that. But, you know, maybe maybe it will still come. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, but now what has happened for like the SDKs, at least for analytics, crashlytics and distribution, they have released a pre-release package. So apparently that is going to be supported. Yay. So um, that's exactly what we're going to see. That is now supported in Dan and Maui. Then there's also the question for like the UI tests. I'm going to save that for the end of the video. So make sure that you catch it all. Let's hop over to Visual Studio 2022 and see how to integrate this in your .NET MAUI application. Before we go into Visual Studio 2022 and integrate App Center inside of our app, um, go to appcenter.ms in your favorite browser. Um, you'll get on a landing page where you can sign in or sign up for an account. Please do that. And whenever you do, you will find yourself here in this portal of App Center. Here you can start creating your app definitions for the different platforms. So let's start by clicking here in the top right, add new and add new app. And here you can enter some metadata for your application. So at the top, let's start with a name, Maui App Center test. There we go. And I like to add the platform in here because else you will have all these duplicate names um, and it's hard to kind of like parse what is what, right? So let's add the platform in that. Um, um, actually, I'm going to make this Windows, so Win. Um, and then you can specify a release type, which is only for your administration, just a little label to specify if it's an alpha or an enterprise version or whatever. I'm going to skip over that for now. And then underneath that, there is the OS and the platform. So that's where it gets kind of interesting, but also not really, because the good news is it's not not really important what you select here. Um, it's only important if you're going to use like um, the App Center build, um, because with App Center build, it's going to try to detect what build definition they should use for building your app. So um, iOS needs Xcode and uh, Windows needs Visual Studio, right? So whenever you select the wrong one, it's not going to be able to build. But .NET MAUI is not supported for the build section on App Center anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. What the rest does is um, kind of like, you know, 
um, specify um, the instructions that you will see inside of the portal um, and you will have a nice separation between like all the analytics and the crash reports for the different platforms so you probably want to make it close to the platform that you're actually going to do here um, now the cool thing is iOS you can also see Objective-C and Swift and React Native and all the things that I mentioned so it's not just Microsoft products if we switch around between the different OS uh, uh, options you can see that we have all these kinds of different things which is cool so I'm going to stick with Windows the other thing is that you will notice is that that it says Xamarin and for Windows we only have UWP so there is not really um, you know um, a, a updated portal yet for .NET MAUI as well uh, so I'm going to stick with Windows and UWP which is the closest thing to whatever we have then behind my camera there's the add new app button um, so click that to add the new app and you will get here inside of your app definition for Windows now in the middle here we see all the instructions which you should follow um, and we can go over to the Xamarin forms instructions because that's kind of like closer to .NET Maui as well so just go there and um, this will instruct you to how to add the packages which is actually still correct um, I'll show you that in a little bit start the SDK this is still correct as well and you need these uh, separate app uh, secrets right here the only thing that's not correct here is UWP we need to change that so be aware of that and here you can actually find the app secret and this will be different for all the app definitions that you create so here we have this one and then if I go back and create another one real quick and I say Maui app center test uh, iOS and I do iOS and I do examine add new app you will see the exact instructions um, and your examine forms and you can scroll down here and you can see this different app ID right and you will just fill that in for iOS UWP Android on the right places and it will connect it to the right things from your code to the app center app definitions so that's really cool um, now let's go back to the Windows one so that it all checks out so here you can see all the different sections on the left you can see build we're going to ignore that distribute to distribute your app the diagnostics that's like the crash lytics that I mentioned and the analytics that's for the analytics of your app right so we're going to focus on the crash lytics and analytics for now if there's something that you want to know more about the other sections in more detail please let me know down in the comments and I'll make a little follow-up here so um, let's go back to the instructions here and um, copy this little app center dot start we're going to use that in a little bit so copy that and go over to Visual Studio 2022 now I created a file new .NET MAUI application um, and I installed the app center package so go to your project right here right click manage NuGet packages search for app center and you will find the right packages make sure to uh, check the include pre-release checkbox here and you will find version 5.0.0 at the time of recording um, and depending on what service you want to use you don't have to use all of them you can just use one of them um, install the analytics one the crashes one I did that for this project and that will bring on all, all the right dependencies um, and if you need more then you can also do distribute um, please don't use push that has been deprecated so please don't do that um, analytics and crashes is it for now and then you need to initialize kind of like this this SDK so um, the most logical place for that is Maui program so let's go in here and um, just outside of our builder let's just paste in that app center dot start now it's not going to recognize it so um, to do that we want to go here and add the right usings we can also use IntelliSense but it's pretty easy so let's just show you that for uh, so that it's really clear uh, dot app center my, using Microsoft dot app center and then we also need it for these analytics and crashes right here so we can just paste this and we can say analytics and do it again and we can say crashes and then we have it all so what this does is it initializes it with all the right um, app IDs right so we need to fill those in here and then um, here the second parameter is or the second and the third actually uh, we specify which services we want to um, enable here so we are going to say analytics and crashes and by just setting this up we don't need to do anything else you will already get information so that's cool let me get the uh, IDs right here so let's go back to the portal scroll down and this is my Windows ID so let's copy that and put it in the right place so I'm gonna put it here in the UWP one but please note this is very important it's not UWP else it won't work it won't connect it to the right place in App Center you want to do Windows desktop one word lowercase Windows desktop that is the one for .NET MAUI apps actually for WinUI apps so make sure that you change that one 
Android, iOS, and macOS, I think, are still the same, um, but for Windows, you need to change this. So for iOS, we could just, you know, just to show you how it is done, uh, go back, go to our iOS one, get the ID from here, and um, specify that for your iOS one, so that you can get it for all the platforms, and it will, depending on the platform that you're running on, it will put it in the right places, right? So that's how this works. Now, without doing anything else, you will get from the analytics, you will already get like, well, actually, let me run it here on Windows, maybe we'll see that immediately, you will get like how many sessions, so how many um, um, times your app was started by which user, what language was on their device, uh, which version of the app they were using. So kind of like the global information. Um, at this point, it's probably good to say that if you're going to do this for your users, you probably want to make really clear that you have enabled analytics and what roughly is going to, you know, send over to your services, where the data is stored is important as well these days. Um, so really be clear and transparent about that. There's even a APIs to kind of like disable the analytics and the crashes entirely if users, if that's what users want. So uh, make sure that you do that and, and do the right thing here. So this is our application, click me, it's just the default template. And now if we go back to the App Center portal, we should see our first things here. So this is iOS, so let's go back to Windows and go to our analytics. And here you can see, boom, this is like real time. This I, There's no cut in here, this actually happened. Um, so you can see active users one monthly, one weekly, one daily one. I'm on a service book two. Um, you can see the OS version, so Windows 10 something something. Um, active users per version, you can see which version, you can see the language. You can see all these kinds of data right here. And you can also do something with sessions. So you can start uh, tracking sessions and events. Um, so this is all stuff that you can get for free. Um, so really cool. Um, now for um, the crashes, kind of like the same thing for crashes, uh, whenever a unhandled exception happens, it will store all the data that it can, the stack trace and whatnot. It will save that. And whenever the user launches the application again, um, that's kind of important. It will send it all over because if a crash happened at that point, they can't send the logs out, right? So you'll have to wait until the application is restarted and then you can send the, well, then the application will send it automatically. You don't have to do anything for that. So without configuring anything, just this, you will already get functionality. That's really cool. But you can take it a step further. So if we go to our main page uh, code behind and we go into the button thingy right here, um, let me just add it here after the count. Um, so first let's do the crashes. So you can start typing crashes and boom, it will automatically do that for you. It will add the right using here at the top. Uh, you can do that manually if you want. Crashes dot, and let's see all the APIs. So you can do something with the user confirmation. So you can ask the confirmation of the user, like do you want to send logs, uh, error logs and whatnot. So maybe that's a good thing to do as well. Um, there's some other things or track error. So you can also do like um, errors that you are handling. Um, so you can do your try catch block and in the catch block, you can say track error. You can just specify the exception in there. Uh, have a dictionary with some properties that you can use to specify extra data. Uh, you can have, even have attachments. So you can take a screenshot if that's what you want, attach that and send that over to App Sender, which is really, really cool. Again, I can keep saying it, it's really cool. Generate test report can also be very uh, useful. So that is you know, whenever we press this button, actually let's just try and see what this does. Generate test crash. So whenever I do this, I go to Windows, um, we click the button and it will generate some kind of error so that we can see if everything is working and it actually shows up in our App Center portal. So let me just quickly um, use this button, see if it actually crashes and see if maybe our data shows up in the portal. That would be really cool. I'll do that right after this to not jump around too much. So you can see here, breakpoint, whatever unhandled exception, um, so like I said, uh, maybe that's the important thing here. I need to start the application now again to make sure that it actually sends the crash report, right? So let's do that just to be sure to see that our data uh, hopefully shows up in the App Center portal as well. All right, there we are. And uh, that's done. But the other thing that you can also do is with the uh, analytics. So let's go back to our main page. So this was the crashes, not really that exciting. It's more or less uh, doing itself. So analytics, and uh, here we have a couple of things more. So we can do start session. So that will, you know, whenever your user may be locked in, you can say start session, and then it starts tracking and then grouping everything into a session, uh, which is for reporting purposes. Um, you don't need to do that. You can also just do track event, which allows you to track lose events. So for this, we are doing a count. So we could do, give it a name. Um, you want to have that name consistently for the events that you want to track, right? And you want to count, and let's just say a new dictionary of strings, 
Um, and what we want to do here then is specify maybe the count of, well, let's name this counter just to be a little bit more clear. So this is the counter event, and then we have a count, and the count is of count dot to string because that is the thing that we're tracking here, right? We want to really know how far those people are counting. Um, so there we have that, and whenever we do that, we should see a um, event of count, and it will report the count to us. So probably in your application, it's going to be a little bit more useful, hopefully. Um, but you know, just to get the point across to see how to work with this analytics right here. And also here, there's a couple of other stuff like like I already mentioned, like to disable it um, whenever the user sets maybe a setting like, hey, I don't want to be tracked, I don't want the analytics to maybe disable that. And there's a couple of other things in there as well. So that's really cool. Um, whenever the application comes up, now I should be able to press the button and it shouldn't crash, but it should report these analytics back to the App Center portal. So I've clicked it a couple of times. Um, let's go back to the portal to see if it actually, you know, happened already. Uh, we should see here an increase in like the um, active users and whatnot. Not really, not yet. Okay, so that hasn't uh, worked yet. The events, you can see the events right here, counter, count three, and you can see a trend, right? If it's going up or down. So you can also use this for a B testing if that's what you want, see how many times uh, a user uses this feature, if it's, it's discoverable enough, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can click through here, you can see the number of users that's actually going through this event, uh, the count, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all the things that I just mentioned basically. And um, maybe our crash is here as well. Oh, there we go. So under the diagnostics, we have issues and we have our test crash. You can see the number of crashes, the number of errors, and you can click through here all the way at the bottom to uh, like the um, 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 details right here. Um, although it didn't really collect any details right here, but typically you would see the stack traces um, together with all the details, like the most effective device, the OS, um, all kinds of useful stuff in here. So that's how to get started with App Center on .NET MAUI. As you could probably already tell, I'm pretty excited about App Center being uh, supported for Dot and Maui now because this is such a beautiful product, and I always hated that it it didn't really see any development. So hopefully, this is the start of a new era where um, App Center will be our go-to mobile command center for everything that has to do with Dot and Maui. At least now you can use it with your crashes, your analytics, and your distribution of apps. So that's really cool. I did mention at the beginning the UI test, so that's something that has been ongoing. Uh, we're investigating at Microsoft to make that happen for .NET Maui as well. So stay tuned for that. We don't have any official thing to report right now, but um, it's being worked on. So um, keep your eyes on this space, basically. I hope you like this video. Let me know if there's anything of the sections or app center that you want to see in more detail now that we have the official support coming. Um, it's still in preview, but uh, I have good hopes that this will be released uh, so that you can use it in public um, applications as well. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see more about that. While you're down there, please click the like button so that this video can spread to more other people to let them know that the app center is back. Oh yeah, and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Maybe you want to check out a little bit more videos on Donut Maui. Check out this playlist for that. Check out this recommended video, which is recommended especially for you. And I'll be seeing you for the next video.